Good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room. The Lord is great. He's greatly to be praised, greatly to be honored and adored. Good morning to all of you. Yes, come in the room. Good morning to you. Yes, yes, yes. So good to see all of you coming in. Yes, let me know that you are here, that you plan to be a participator, not just a spectator this morning. Yes, 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 yes. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Good morning to you, Sister Regina. So good to see you this morning. Sister Linda, good morning to you. God bless you. Sister Mary, good to see you this morning. God bless you. Sister Angela, good to see you all this morning. Yes, the Lord is great. He continues to shower his blessings upon us. Good morning to you, Sister Rose. Yes, yes, yes. God bless you. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. We're going to get right to what the Lord has for us on this morning. Father God, we just bless you. We praise you, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us what it is that we need, God, for our life, for our health, for our healing, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us the tools that we need, God, to move the enemy out of our way, to get him out of our path, oh Lord God, that we may have smooth and safe passage, God, to victory, to you, to the success and the life, God, that you have called for us to have, oh God. So we thank you, God, Lord, right now for how you're blessing us and, God, for how you're healing us, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for this word, God, that's going to go forth, God, with power and with might, oh Lord God. And we thank you, oh God, for how, God, you're going to take this word and engraft this word to the hearts of men, men and women, God, that they may be changed, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for continuing, God, to shower your blessings upon your people, Lord God. And Lord, we don't take it for granted, but Lord, God, all of our days, we shall give you thanks. We shall praise you, God. We shall magnify you, God, for you are God, the King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. And we praise you this morning, oh God. We thank you, God, for all the things you have done for us, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for, for provision. We thank you, Lord God, for protection. We thank you, Lord God, my God, for everything that you've done for us, oh God, for just being the example, Jesus, that we need, God, in order to walk and live on this earth, God, and be, God, together with one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, people of God. Listen, this is a great day to be a part of the kingdom of God. It's a great day for us, my God, to uh, just to just to be here. I'm telling you, the Lord is great. He continues to bless us. He continues to do such mighty, mighty and powerful things. You know, as I was, um, you know, waking up or even thinking about uh, this day, I thought about, man, it's already the middle of March. Do you all believe that? It is already the middle of March. And we, we find that we are um, a, a year already past the um, pandemic that was, you know, last last year. We um, a year past that. Um, we we get up day by day. Good morning to you, Sister Louise, Sister Charisse. Good morning to you, Sister Nora. Good morning. God bless you to all of those that were uh, I didn't greet while I was yet in prayer. Good morning to you, Sister Deborah, Sister Phyllis. Um, we we wake up in the morning and we, you know we we do what we do. We eat dinner, whatever it is that we do. Then we go to bed. We we get up again in the morning. We do what we do, and then we go to bed. And you know we find that. More and more is just day after day after day. We're doing the, doing these same things, and we're finding that time is flying. Now the saying is that time flies when you're having fun. So I don't know how much fun people are having. Some people may be having fun. Some people may not be having fun. Good morning to you, Sister Cecilia. But time is really flying. Are you all finding that as well? That time is just moving. It is just moving. Um, but the Lord is saying to us, even in this this time that I'm saying, you know, the time is flying and um, it's just moving and passing us by. I even hear the Lord, though, saying, good morning, Jesus and Carrie, this is Valerie, good morning, that we got to make the best of the time that we have because time is moving. It's just, you know, time waits for no one. I don't know. My mama used to say that it may be something in the Bible, but time waits for nobody. So we, you know, there's a scripture in the word of God. I'm going to get to the scripture and found in Ephesians chapter five. Um, but the thing about what the Lord is saying, even throughout Ephesians is you've got to look at what you're doing and make the best of the time that you have. Make the best of the opportunities that God gives to you. Because I'm telling you, time is moving. And we know that we can, the Bible says we can redeem the time. And we can't get back what has happened in the past. We can't get back the things, you know, that have, that have transpired. Sometimes I know we want to look back at 2020 and we was just want to throw it away. But listen, some, you know, for some people, 2020 seemed like a dream, you know. So for some people, it seemed like a nightmare. But in all of that, we are a year out of you know, through the pandemic, seems like we're still going to be in it, but time is just flying. 
Let me read the scripture really quickly to you. It's found in Ephesians um, chapter 5. And I want you to look at the entire um, verses 1 through 18. And I'm just going to look at a few. Um, I'm going to start with verse number 14. It said, this is why, why it is said, wake up sleeper, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. It says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And then it goes on to say in 17, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And then the, this passage of scripture goes on to talk about, you know, how we should live and what we should do. So I just want to say this morning to us that as time is flying, good morning to you, Sister Luberta, Sister Linda, good morning to you. As time is flying, as time is moving past us, as the, you know, as the days are just, I mean, seems like there's, it's a blur for the days. We got to make sure that we make the best of the time that we have making the most of the time that we have, as the word of God says. You know, uh, um, it is said that, you know, t two greatest enemies of us being able to change or transform are the things that we regret that we did in the past and the anxiety that we have about what will happen to us in the future. Because we need to continue to evolve. And although the time is passing us by and sometimes we feel like we're just sitting here and time is just zooming by. You know, you've seen a commercial where just something gets zoomed by. Many of us were either staying in the past or we're in the future. But we have to recognize that time passes with us. And as time goes, we've got to know that we've got to organize ourselves. We've got to have priorities. Um, we've got to, you know, the Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto us. Um, that's found in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33. All these things, he said, will be added unto us. So we've just got to be mindful of the things that we do in the time, in the, in the body that we have right now, in the time that we have. we got to recognize, you know, sometimes um, as we're thinking about these things that, um, that we've done or things that we haven't done, things that have caused us to have anxiety or, or whatever it is that we've done, we got to think about those things. we got to understand... Um, that our time here is limited. You know, sometimes we don't have priorities in our life and sometimes we end up wasting the time that we have with the Lord. Instead of spending time, instead of enjoying the time, we end up wasting the time. And we got to be mindful, people of God, that we don't end up wasting the time. You know, we got we to gotta make sure that God is first in everything and making sure that the things that we consider are the things that will bring blessings and healing into our life, not the things that are detrimental to us, but that will bring healing and blessings to us. So what, you know, so understanding that our time here on earth, um, it is limited. We got to know that we live not on our time, but we live on the time of God. We live on God's time. The psalmist in um, Psalms 39 and 4 says, Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. We got to recognize the Bible says that we have, um, he's given us um, three score and 10 years or, you know, maybe 20 years, maybe four score years. He says, if we have strength, but the Lord tells us that quickly the time passes away. He says that we fly away. So we've got to recognize that our time here is not forever. I think I said before, my when my son was younger, he said, Mommy, you're going to live to your 1,600 years old. Well, if I do live to 1,600, I hope I'm still in my right mind, can still walk around and do some things. But that's a long time. And the Lord has not promised us to live 1,600 years. You know, even though we know back in the Bible days, they lived a long time. And there were some things that we're doing now, maybe that, maybe that come on, truncates the time that we're supposed to live. But the Lord gave it in the Word of God, 70, 80 years, you know, even, but even now, even that's not a long time, but we've got to recognize, yes, thank you, Sister Cherise, even we got to recognize that our time here is limited. Our time, you know, here um, on this earth is limited. So we've got to recognize there are some things that we need to do. The Lord is calling for us to do. How do we prolong? How do we prolong our life past the time? you know, that, you know, 40 or 50 years to the time that the Lord is even speaking to us? We've got to make the best of it. We got to make the best of the time that we have work and working and walking with the Lord, 
doing what the Lord has called for us to do for this time and for this season of our lives. There are many things, I'm telling you, many things that God has spoken in our in our lives, many things that he said to us that we ought to do, many things that he shared with us. My God, that we have got to understand that the Lord is, is, is um, leading us to many things. As we look at the scripture in Ephesians, um, Paul is encouraging the people of God and encouraging the church to live their lives in the way that Christ wants them to live them. And so since he's encouraging the people, the church, the church at Ephesus to live their lives in a way that, that God, Christ wants us to live them, we should be doing the same thing. Sister Regina, we should be living the same way. This, so as, as Ephesians chapter five talks about, it, it says, be imitators of God. Be imitators of him as, as love, dearly loved children and, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself as a ransom for us. He gave himself as a, a sacrifice to God on our behalf. And we look at this instruction that the Lord is saying, just be imitators of me. We were created in the image of God. And since we were created in his image, people of God, we got to be able to live like him, follow his instruction, follow his example. My God, be imitators of God. God. Now, I know some of us have seen people who have tried to imitate us and people who have looked up to us and tried to do the things that we have been doing. So I recognize we know all about imitating. We maybe we ourselves have tried to imitate. Yes, yes, yes. We have tried to imitate others and we have tried to do what others have done, even maybe as as children, but even perhaps as adults. But listen, we are to walk, as Paul is saying, Paul is saying we are to walk the way the Lord walks. We are to love the way the Lord loved. We are, listen, he gave himself up in order to restore a relationship with the Father. Sometimes we got to be willing to give up what we think is the best thing for our lives and live our lives in such a way, somebody, that we benefit others more than ourselves. We've got to to be self-sacrificing. That's good. That's good, Pastor Tina. We've got to be self-sacrificing because we know that love is what kept Jesus on the cross. The songwriter says, we know that love is what held him there. Love is what allowed him to allow the people to put that spear in his side. Love makes a difference also in our lives. And so Paul is giving us some instruction and, and, um, in, in, the, in the Ephesians chapter five. And I want you all to read it because it's pretty clear of what he is saying. He's saying, but among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's people. Now, I know we read the word of God and sometimes, good morning, Jesus and Jackie. Oh, yes, Brother Larry, good morning. Sometimes we see the word of God and we dismiss the things that we don't want to do or we don't want to, um, to, to obey. But listen, we can't dismiss anything that the Lord is sharing with us. The Bible says in verse number four of that fifth chapter of Ephesians, nor should there be any obscenity. Oh, stop it, Pastor. Tina, no foolish talk, no coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. He's saying instead of all the joking, instead of all the cursing, instead of, listen, all the foolish talking, what he is saying to you is to give thanks unto the Lord. He said, for this you can be sure there will be no impure. Come on in here, somebody. No impure, no greedy person. Such a man is an idolater. Has nobody like that has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. I know we talk about time is flying and, and we do certain things because maybe we feel like we're our backs are up against the wall. And we do certain things that may not be like God. Come on in here, somebody. Because we feel like we've been pushed to do certain things. We feel like maybe because there's not enough money in our pocket that we have to lie, cheat, and steal. My God, but the Lord is saying to us, there will be no place in the heaven, my God, for those who are impure, for those who are greedy, for those who are immoral. I'm just reading the word of God. But then the word is God is saying, let no man deceive you with empty words for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are dis disobedient. So that says, and it says, don't be partakers, don't be partners with with them. 
So don't be partners with those people. Oh my God, that, that just kind of fill the, the, fill the room with just empty words with, I call it fluff, just stuff that they just want to say. He said, don't be partners with them. The Lord is giving us some instruction about who we can connect with and who we should hang out with. He didn't say don't love them, but he said, don't yoke up with them. Don't be partners with them. I know sometimes we talk about, oh, come on here, somebody. Sometimes, you know, we think, that the Lord is asking us to, you know, to, to hang out and be with everybody. But right here, he's saying of those that are not going the way of Christ, those who are not listen, listening to the word of God. He says, don't don't hang out with them. He said, he said, get rid of them. Don't don't hang out with those people because you need to be with winners. Don't be with the losers because the losers are those that will lose my God's salvation. They will lose their place. They will lose their book name in the book of life. They will lose their place in the kingdom of God. He's saying, don't hang out with them with those. Don't hang out with them. He's saying, but well, you got to be uh, sober minded. You got to, my God, know what the will of God is for your life. I know my, mo my mother used to say, Yo, if you can't say something good about somebody, don't say nothing at all. A lot of people, my God, are talking uh, things about people, but you got to understand the Lord is saying, that's just empty talk. It's just empty. We, we can say a lot of things even right here. And, 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 and when I do meditations, I recognize that my time is limited. I recognize that I have 30 minutes. That's my own time. 30 minutes to give you a word that's going to impact your life. I can't fill that time with empty words because it will mean nothing. I can't fill that time with emptiness. But, but listen, as we... My God are doing the things that God has called for us to do. We've got to recognize that God is saying to us for those people don't hang out with. And then he says, for you who were once in darkness, that's verse number eight. You are now in the light. Live, he says, as children of light. Listen, the mamas used to say, when you know better, you do better. My God, he says, you were once in darkness, but you're not there anymore. Now, come on in here, somebody. Now you are in the light. And because you are in the light, he says, live as a children of light. You know the word of God, uh, Apostle Deborah. You know the word of God. We know it. He says, so since you know it, walk in it. Don't know it and then ignore it. We know the Bible tells us, listen, that when we do, oh my God, when we do wrong and when we know Know it. The Bible says we're going to get whipped with many stripes. Oh, y'all know that's in the word of God. But it also says when you do wrong and you don't know it, you're still going to get whipped. It just says you're going to get whipped with many stripes when you do it willingly. But my God, you got to recognize the Lord is saying to us that when you became a new creature in Christ, my God, he said no longer are you that old man. No longer are you that one that cusses and fusses. No longer, longer are you that one that kills and steals. No longer, my God, are you that one one that goes the way of the enemy. What he's saying is, you are in the light. He says, since you're in the light, my God, you got to walk in the light. Hey, come on in here, somebody. You are the light. He says, the Bible says, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And then, let me hear, tell you what it says in verse number 10. It says, and find out what pleases the Lord. We know, my God, that in order to please God, we got to have faith. We got to believe in him. But listen, it says, find out what pleases God. I got to get out of here. It says, find out. Sometimes people are always, listen, I know you all have heard it. You, maybe you've said it. What is my purpose? Oh, who wrote the book? Rick, uh, Rick Warren wrote the book, books, many books about purpose-driven life, a purpose-driven church. He probably even wrote about a purpose-driven child. Listen, maybe a purpose-driven marriage. I don't know what he's written about, but it's purpose-driven. And what was that book about? To find, help you find your purpose in life. So we often say that. What is, God, my purpose? God, what am I doing here? What, God, am I doing on this earth? And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter to five, verse number 10, it says, find out what pleases my God, what pleases the Lord. Because what you say is, if I knew what my purpose was, if I knew what pleased him, then I think I just believe that I would do it. My God. But I'm telling you, Paul says, as, he, as Paul is saying, find out what pleases him. We got to know, listen, that God wants something else in our lives that, that maybe other than what we're doing right now. Because I know you may say that if I knew I would do that thing, but if you really knew what God required of you, 
If you really knew what God wanted you to do, if you really knew what your purpose was on this earth, would you honestly walk in that purpose? Oh my God. I want you to know that some of us, listen, we are looking at our purpose. Our purpose is right in our eyes, it's right here in plain sight for us. But I'm telling you, because time is flying, we may never, oh, come on here. We may never walk in that purpose because we're not focused on what it is that God would have for us to do. Come on, sometimes it's just like my God, it's just like a buried treasure. You got to dig for it. You got to dig and find out, God, what is it? What is your will for my, oh yes, what is your will for my life? If we look in that Romans chapter 12, you say, it says, brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God, that my God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before the Lord. The Bible says, "Rich, which is your reasonable service, which is your reasonable worship and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds that you can prove what is that good and acceptable, my God, and perfect will for your life. Come on in here, somebody. You can prove it. If you knew what it was, the Lord says, uh, walk holy. Oh, come on in here. Y'all didn't want me to say it. But listen, if you knew what God wanted you to do, my God, would you do it? If you knew that God wanted you to, 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 to release those friends that are not walking Walk in the way that you wanted to walk, would you do it? If you knew that God wanted you to live holy without profanity, without immorality, Sister Rose, would we do it? If we knew that God wanted to love, wanted us to love our brothers, love our sisters, love those despitefully misuse us, if we knew that, that was the will that God had for our life, would we do it? If we knew, my God, that it pleased God for us to help our fellow man, I don't care, my God, if he's done something to you in the past. If we knew that that, oh God, help me in here somebody. If we knew that that pleased God, would we do it? Oh my God, would you do it? Paul says, find out what pleases him. Paul says, find out, Brother Dwayne, what pleases the Lord? So this has nothing to do with, with, with fruitless deeds of darkness, he said, but rather expose them. Number first, number 12 says, for shameful to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. And he said, this is why I say, <laughs> wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead. And Christ will shine upon you. Time is flying, people of God. When you're having fun. Time is flying when you're not having fun. Time is just flying. And many of us are just asleep while time is passing us by. But the Spirit of the Lord here is speaking right now. It says, wake up. Rise from the dead. Be careful how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. 16 again says, making every opportunity. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Paul has given us some great instruction in that scripture. In the word of God. Because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. There is no guarantee that we're going to go to bed tonight and wake up. There's no guarantee that we'll get through the day. But as we go day by day, we understand and we recognize this, that the Lord is soon to come. We recognize that one day he's coming back. He's coming back for a church <laughs> that wants to please him. Coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. We got to understand this and our time is limited and make the best use of the time that we have. My God, I know we're all busy. We're all in a hurry. My God, but as we lit, as we read that, strip, that scripture, as we see what Paul is telling us to do, we see that Paul is sharing with us how, my God, how we can live this life and live it to the best of our, but live it fully as a man, as a woman of God. My God, because he said, listen, time is, my, who says time is filled with swift transitions. We got, we got to be effective in the transformations that we're, that we're in. We got to, we got to move. He said, you aren't, you're not in the dark anymore. Let's transform from that. We're not children anymore. The Bible says when you was a child, you acted like a child. You spoke like a child. He said, listen, when you became a man, you put away that foolishness. You put away that foolish talk. 
So you got to put that thing away because time is, is flying. Put away that foolish talk because ultimately we need to get where Jesus is. We, we, we want to be, the Bible says we need to be transformed transformed, not conformed to the world, but transformed into the image of God. We want to be more like him. We want to be more like him. We know that change sometimes is uncomfortable for us. And with change comes a major overhaul. Change, you know, sometimes our lives are transformed. Our priorities are shifted around. But we got to recognize that when we get done with this, we will emerge as wonderful men and women of God, as great disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is flying, people of God. You know, somebody said that life is what happens to you while you're making plans to do something else. Life happens. Life just goes by. But we've got to recognize that if life, as life goes by, you know, the Bible says, help us to redeem the time. As life goes by, we got to recognize that the time that we have is, is wonderful time. Let's use every opportunity that we have to be the great children of God that God has called for us to be, as we see that Paul is instructing in Ephesians chapter 5. Let us, my God, live our life so that when at the end of our life, our thought, our goal is to be with Jesus. First, we want to be like him, and then we want to be with him. Listen, we got to make the best of the time that we have so that we can do what God has called for us to do, not only in this time, but in the time to come. Father God, I bless your name. I praise you, oh God, for this word. I thank you, Lord God, for helping us, God, to understand, God, that time, God, is, is limited. We don't have, God, an infinite amount of time, oh God, but Lord God, even you've given us a, a certain amount of time that we are to be on this earth. And because we recognize that our time is limited, God, we got to make the best use of the time that we have. The best use, God, of every opportunity that you've given us. Every opportunity, oh Lord God, to be strong. And every opportunity, Lord God, to be happy. And every opportunity, Lord God, to be successful. Lord God, we pray that you will help us to stay humble, God. Even in the time that you are, God, bringing victories on our lives, oh Lord God. Because we know, God, yes, the enemy tries to come in like a flood. But the Spirit of the Lord, God, would lift up a standard against him. And we thank you, Lord God, that we have the power, God, God, over the enemy. We're not arrogant about that, oh Lord God. It's just a fact. And so God, keep us humble, Lord God, to the fact, Lord, my God, that the enemy can't touch us. He can't destroy us. My God, keep us to the fact, Lord God, I'm humble to the fact, Lord God, that you are a healer, oh God, that you will forgive us, God, of every sin that we have, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that even as the time, Lord God, has gone by, the time has passed, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for meeting our every need according to your riches and glory by Christ. Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for helping us, God, to walk through the doors that you have opened for us, oh God, that every opportunity that comes our way, Lord God, you allow us, God, to take advantage of that. Thank you, Lord God, for helping us, God, to recognize and discern, Lord God, the friends, God, that we should be or should not be with, oh Lord God, that we, God, can gently, God, move away from them, Lord God, but because of your word is telling us, Lord God, that we should not, God, hang out, God, not connect with, not hang, hook up with or partner with those, God, who are going not the way that you want us to go. So we thank Thank you, Lord God, that we are determined today to make the best of each day. We are determined today, God, to live better, God, today than we did on yesterday. We are determined today to move closer, God, to the place where you would have us to be. We are determined because of that, Lord God, because we know, God, that our time, God, is short. But because our time is short, we thank you for giving it to us, oh God, that we might live, God, together with you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us, God, to recognize that we are more and more like you. We have been created in your image, oh God. We have been created for power, God. We have been created, God, for victory, oh God. We have been created, oh God, for the anointing that God is even on our lives, oh God. Help us and bless us today, oh Lord God. Keep us, God, in your perfect peace. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Bless you, oh my God. Bless God today. Listen, time is flying, but listen, don't allow time to pass you by. Listen, make the best of every opportunity that you have. Make this day the best day of the rest of your life. I love you with the love of Jesus. Jesus. You have a wonderful day. Go in peace.